President Donald Trump rose to power propelled in part by his rhetoric about invaders from the south swarming the border and his claim that Mexico was sending rapists and killers, but the facts proved quite the opposite. The government's own figures show the number of people crossing the border had been declining steadily. And in 2015, when Trump launched his campaign, a Pew Research Center analysis found that among one group of migrants, Mexicans, more people were leaving the United States for Mexico than coming across. After two years in office, Trump's bravado-driven policies have contributed to reversing what was a positive trend. How else to explain the sharp reversal in what looked like hard-won gains in a complicated, morally-wrenching problem, starting just after Trump took office? Years after claiming there was one, Trump now has a real crisis. The number of border apprehensions is at the highest level in more than a decade, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection (CBP). Homeland Security Secretary Kirstjen Nielsen says the system is in freefall. Trump has finally helped create the crisis he pretended existed before. What's Trump's solution? Every possible idea to make the problem worse. Everything he proposes, from cutting aid to Central American countries some $700 million in a variety of programs to closing the border, will exacerbate the problem. That is, of course, if you think the challenge is how to solve a humanitarian crisis, how to humanely manage and perhaps reduce the flow of families and individuals into the United States. If you think the problem is how to stoke the passions of Americans in order to win more votes, then the question looks different. Nationalist leaders have a thing for migrant and refugee crises. Hardly any issue is more beneficial to their hold on power. Whether real or imagined, the specter of outsiders invading the country contains the perfect elements of us versus them passion and fear-inducing uncertainty to rally voters around a flag-hugging strongman. If Trump were looking for something more than political fuel to ignite hotter fires among his staunchest supporters, he would offer a thoughtful, muscular policy, one that would invigorate Washington's efforts to improve conditions in Central America, an effort that serves U.S. security and economic interests as much as it does that of its neighbors. The United States should expand, not suspend, programs aiming to attack the unlivable conditions in Central American countries with some of the world's highest murder rates. For many, life is so dangerous and the prospects are so dim that they would rather risk the perilous trek and endure the cruelty they encounter in the United States than risk staying. Some programs in police training, rule of law, human rights standards and economic development are too new to show results, but others are already proving effective. Trump's chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, instead disingenuously tells an interviewer we told you so, claiming that the lack of a giant border wall is the reason why so many people, mostly from the so-called Northern Triangle El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala are suddenly at the border. That's Trumpian hogwash. Don't believe it. Trump's own policies have helped bring us to this moment. Consider the numbers. Apprehensions at the border peaked at 1.6 million people in 2000, according to CBP data, slightly higher than in 1986. The number dropped most years after that. By fiscal year 2017, it had plummeted by an amazing 82% to 303,000. At the same time, migration from Mexico had reversed with research and data from the U.S. and Mexican governments showing a million Mexicans voluntarily returning to their country between 2009 and 2014.